Oh wow. Well look at me, I'm finally back at my setup. I wonder why. It's finally time. I'm always making small changes to my setup, but it's taken me too long to share what I use on the regular to edit these videos and stream on Twitch, introducing my ultimate setup V2. Perhaps there are going to be a lot of things here, so please make sure to stick around until the very end. Let's go ahead and dive right in. And before we continue, I just wanted to remind you that we have a Twitch channel where we stream every Friday and Saturday from 8 p.m. and to 10 p.m. Eastern Time, so why not go ahead and drop a follow? And also, don't forget to follow us on Twitter and Instagram, and also make sure to check out the merch store. There's plenty of black and white sweetness to choose from up there, so go ahead and check that out. And then make sure to take a look at the podcast as well, as the podcast always goes live every Wednesday and Sunday. And with that said, enough rambling, let us get straight into the video. And first, let's start with the system that powers this entire setup. And for the love of God, ignore the cable management. I really haven't had the time, but I will eventually get to it, I promise. This is going to be a custom build running a Core i7-8700K, an RTX 2080, not TI, and 64 gigs of RAM for the most important specs. This has been a monster PC that has carried me through a lot of projects from animations, graphic design, a lot of video editing, gaming, and live streaming, etc. And well, I mean, it is just a great build, though it could be better for sure, but for now, I'm very happy with it. And now, this desk is just a random L-shaped desk that I bought from eBay two years ago. It's not very high quality by any means, and I think that I got it for around 130 bucks at the time, but it has gotten the job done just fine. It doesn't wobble, and it looks pretty nice up close, though it is just compressed wood. It's not really high quality wood by any means. It fits everything I need, and that's what matters the most here. As you've probably already noticed from the B-roll, I do use four monitors. My main monitor is going to be an Asus ROG 27-inch 1440p 1 millisecond response time monitor that I bought about four years ago. It is a TN panel, but the colors are honestly still really nice on this display, and it's lasted quite a while. It's spacious enough for me, and it looks beautiful enough for me to feel comfortable doing my work on it. I don't think it's being sold anymore, so I'm going to leave the link to the most current version instead so that you can still get something that is more similar to it if you were in the market for a monitor like this. And literally right on top of my monitor, I have my Lometric time clock and sub counter attached with some adhesive Velcro. I pretty much just have it here as a sub counter and also as an ego boost more than anything and updates me every time that there is a new follower on Twitch and Twitter and updates me on YouTube every 10 subscribers or so. Speaking of which, we're approaching 10k subscribers, so please feel free to subscribe as it would actually really be helpful to the channel in getting there by the end of this year. So yeah, let's try to see if we can make it happen. And then right next to my main monitor, I do have a 24-inch Acer monitor vertically placed next to my main monitor, and I have it here mostly for monitoring my side tasks. Things like having Streamlabs OBS open while keeping track of chat. It's also useful for having other side tasks like watching YouTube videos, on the side while writing scripts on the main monitor or replying to emails and stuff like that essentially so that's why i have it here and that's why i have it vertically mounted in particular and it's also to save a little bit more on desk space since i didn't originally plan on having four monitors to begin with and now on the other side of my desk i do have this 20 inch monitor from dell this is just a 720p monitor that was gifted to me they were going to throw it out so instead they gave it to me and i have it attached to this wall mount from amazon i mostly use it for monitor monitoring the actual live stream on the side and make sure that the stream itself on Twitch is running smoothly since Streamlabs OBS won't show you how it's faring connection wise I want to say like it's not a visual representation it'll just show you what the stream looks like but it won't show you if it's lagging or anything it'll tell you but that but it won't show it to you but it's also great for using it as a monitor for monitoring chat if I'm streaming art on this side or watching some shows since I'm drawing right in front of it. And my main screen for doing just that is actually my Hue Young Canvas 22 Plus. This is a 22 inch 1080p monitor that looks very beautiful and I have to say that I'm very comfortable drawing on it and creating animated shorts and things of the like. I've been using it for the past month or so so not too long but I've loved my time with it so far. I also have this Belkin wrist rest that has saved my elbows from having to deal with a hard surface. 
so hey pretty nice now this is when i might start to look like a razor fanboy but i do like a lot of their stuff starting with the keyboard this is going to be my razor black widow elite it's been a fantastic mechanical keyboard it's loud it's got rgbs and playback controls that light up right around the corner along with an included wrist rest and really i love it it's great and i won't replace it anytime soon plus it's been great for gaming right now i don't like razor mice i never have so i use this launcher hack g502 the wired version it's got rgbs and all of the weight that i would want this mouse feels like it's of such high quality because of that it does have customizable buttons and they're positioned nicely as well however it's the feel and quality of the buttons overall that made me pick this mouse in general which is resting right on this razor firefly v1 it is a great mouse pad in my opinion it's got a hard surface to it and rgbs it's just a nice looking mouse pad with a lot of surface area at least enough for me and i've loved it since i got it about three years or so since my purchase and it's honestly still going really strong next is going to be the razor leviathan i got this soundbar also around four years ago and it's been great it's just a soundbar that sounds pretty good for constant consumption and comes with a subwoofer that is way too powerful for my needs that is for sure honestly it's great and i think that it fits really nicely underneath my monitor no rgb though which is a big shame coming from razor but i won't replace these until they stop working to be completely honest so yeah just saying and as you probably noticed i do have this little screen on underneath the leviathan and this is the corsair nexus this is a touch bar essentially so you can use it to program shortcuts among other things as well but i hate the experience of actually using this thing because the touch screen offers no feedback and the screen itself honestly isn't very nice to look at either i didn't feel like returning it so instead i just have it as a way to monitor the temperatures of my gpu and overall cpu load which is honestly pretty cool to have it's the only use that i could get out of it honestly but that's just me i guess so yeah and now i mentioned that i stream a lot so naturally i would have a stream deck and here i got the stream deck xl from elgato it's been a great tool for opening shortcuts activating the lights around my setup controlling spotify directly during my streams and going through my transitions when i'm live also i like to use this in final fantasy 14 for having visual shortcuts to any and all of my abilities absolutely love that and yes i do have this oddly positioned but it's because it does make it a lot easier to reach from here and i actually have a tablet mount holding it up while still it being propped up onto my keyboard and honestly it works for me it it's got enough stability for me and now the most important streaming tool i have my go xlr this is my audio interface of choice since it's got fantastic preamps that can support any microphone I have thrown at it, and trust me, I've tested so many XLR microphones with it. I guarantee that lots of quality will be coming from it for sure. It's going to have a virtual mic EQ, the motorized faders for, for controlling the different aspects of my stream that pretty much only affect me for the exception of the microphone, of course. I have the sound bank loaded with sound effects too and cues, an immediate mute button, and a soundboard for modifying my voice on the spot. There's also a ton of customization in general, including the RGB lighting on this board. So honestly, I've had a ton of fun customizing it and just making it my own. I love this board too much, and it is actually what I'm using to have this microphone connected on there and to be able to record the audio for this video, which leads me directly into what this microphone is. And the microphone that I have paired up to it and that I'm speaking into right now is an Audio-Technica BP40. This is my favorite microphone of all of the XLR microphones I've ever tested because I believe it sounds the best with my voice. This is a dynamic microphone that I have hooked up to its designated shock mount, which is about a hundred bucks in and of itself. That's, I mean, one issue, one thing that I don't like paying for. And a mic arm that looks like Rhodes, but it's definitely not Rhodes, but it all gets the job done very well. And it is my favorite setup honestly for pretty much all of my purposes minus doing voice work in particular like voice acting but everything else with it is honestly pretty great now i also have an iphone 12 as a direct part of my streaming setup 
it's an extension of my monitoring experience for my live streams because it's another way of looking at chat and seeing how the stream is performing on a mobile device. Now, why an iPhone 12 of all things? Well, I need an iPhone for work in general anyway, but I usually just prefer to have another screen, like just another way of being able to monitor my streams in general from a different perspective, from a mobile perspective. Plus, I use a Google Pixel 4 as my main phone anyway, since I'm more of an Android guy regardless. So yeah, this phone is definitely underutilized but it definitely has gotten the job done for me i think it's a fantastic device for this so clearly it is meant for much more so yeah next is the actual streaming cameras there are technically four of those as well for getting different viewing angles my main camera is going to be the panasonic lumix gx8 this is a 4K camera, but I only need it for streaming at 1080p, and it's one that is capable of incredible results if you're a filmmaker, a photographer, and even a streamer since it has a clean HDMI feed. Autofocus is honestly just fine on this, but I do tend to keep it on manual focus anyway because uh, Panasonic autofocus is usually not that great, and quite frankly, since I'm just in one spot most of the time, there's no need to have autofocus on. And I also do have a Panasonic 12mm lens attached to it, so it's pretty wide and captures quite a bit of the scene. I love this camera and the lens for what it delivers for sure. My secondary camera, which is the one that I use when I'm streaming art, is the Sony RX100 Mark III. This is a 1080p camera with a clean HDMI feed, and I have it connected to a cheap capture card from Amazon and a dummy battery, of course. And the same thing is going to go for my Lumix GX8. I do have a dummy battery connected to it. It works very well, to be completely honest, and it is attached to this clamp stand as well. It is honestly good stuff, and it definitely gets the job done very well. I think that autofocus is pretty good with it. I would say, e even if the colors aren't necessarily my favorite, I feel like it doesn't work that way with my particular scenery, but I think it's just fine. It was my old main camera, so I'm honestly fine just having it back there. Now, one thing that I did forget to mention was that I used the Elgato HD60S capture card to connect my main camera to my PC and to capture the game footage and present it back onto the stream in the cleanest way possible. It's been an awesome capture card and I am aware that the Plus model does indeed exist, but I don't have a need to upgrade if I'm just streaming in 1080p anyway, so... Yeah, that's my take on that. And now right up here, I am going to have this little Akita webcam that has a privacy lid on it, and I just use it for getting another angle from above. It is a 1080p webcam in quotations, but it's not that great. And then there is going to be the Logitech C920, which is on my Dell monitor from earlier. This is useful for getting a secondary angle from the side if I'm streaming games or from the top when I'm streaming from my art station, for instance. It's just more leeway and more angles, essentially. Not too much to it. Now, my headphones of choice for streaming and for pretty much everything are going to be my Audio Technica ATH-M40X headphones. I've spoken in great lengths about these headphones and how incredible they are. I get a very flat sound signature, which makes them great for monitoring audio and editing, but most importantly, they offer enough sound separation for giving me a pretty great experience when I'm streaming because it gives me a lot of separation between, you know, the audio coming from the game and background music, other things going on, like it doesn't just mesh everything together and it's not muddy at all. It gives you just a good amount of separation and it all feels clean. I love this pair i use it for editing i use it for pretty much everything all of the time it's awesome and secondary is my audio technica ath ad 700x open back headphones i do prefer these for watching content and gaming overall more so than for fine-tuned work so that's what i give it the most purpose for but overall this is the pair that i use the most the ATH M40 axis. And now let's go ahead and talk about the lighting. For my main light, I do have the Ogato key light. I wanted it because of its stream deck control, so I can turn them on and off with, without directly interacting with the light switch and change the color temperature on the fly if I wanted to. It's enough to light myself very well on my main camera, of course, while hardly taking up any space because it is clamped onto my desk and that is something that I really appreciate it is also a nice size and it gets stupidly bright i really love it however i have the key light air on the side to light myself during my drawing streams which has very similar functionality but it's smaller and actually stands on my desk instead of clamping since i have the space on that corner and it was cheaper after all so i was trying to save some money both of these lights are incredible and offer a lot of customization while getting extremely bright just like i mentioned earlier and now I do have this TP-Link RGB strip behind my desk for accent lighting, and I always keep it at blue since it complements the purple of my other lights and 
yeah, it is great and works over Wi-Fi with my phone and Google Home Mini if I need to. Though I've been having more issues with the Google Home Mini functionality overall. And now for wall lighting, I do have two sets of Nano Leaf rhythms on each side. I have them set to go from blue to purple periodically. And this is just going to be a treat to look at, really. It definitely complements the setup in my opinion, though you guys may not always be able to see it, especially on stream. They're quite pricey, though, and honestly... That expenditure still kind of hurts a bit to this day. And then right next to that, we've actually got the LifeX beam. This beam is what really appears in my streams as my main background light, and it definitely serves its purpose incredibly well. It's super bright and looks great on camera and, and on stream. But speaking of lighting, let's go back to my desk. Here I actually have the double RGB towers from Corsair, uh, the Corsair LT100 IQ. They are exactly what I just described them as. And that's perfectly fine as they add more character to my desk and I like it. And I appreciate the symmetrical look here since I do have them on both sides of my desk. One next to my main monitor, the other one next to my vertical monitor. And yeah, it works just fine. Now, sometimes I don't want to play games on my PC and want to just play some VR games on my Quest 2. So I have it ready right here hanging off of this hook for whenever it's time to just play a game. I've been playing quite a bit of Until They Fall and it's been a total treat. I have a full review of this Quest 2 on the channel as well as a comparison video with the Rift S if you're interested. So yeah, do make sure to check that out if you do want more details on that. But I do have to say that the Quest 2 really did impress me a lot. And then going back to my desk, you're going to find my USB hub slash SD card reader for transferring data from my camera to it. And it also holds my Wi-Fi adapter for my PC. That is essentially the entire purpose of it. So don't get me wrong, it is a lot more useful than I'm making it seem like it is. And next to that is where I keep the bulk of my work. This is going to be WD's 8TB station external hard drive. 8TB sounds like a lot, but when you're working with videos, you will eventually need to upgrade every time. I was on 4 terabytes and that ended up going away quickly since I shoot in 4K. And maybe one day I will have to, but 8 terabytes so far has honestly been pretty great and I don't see myself having to upgrade that anytime soon. I think I'm just going to manage the storage around that for a little while, but with 4 terabytes, trust me, it did become a bit overwhelming. And finally, that's it. This has been my ultimate setup version 2, and I do look forward to adding and removing more to it, even fixing up the cables of course, and hopefully showing you guys an even cooler setup in the future. So what did you think? Let me know your comments in the comment section below, of course. Now with that said, I am going to be leaving links to everything that I can that I have on my desk that, that I use on the daily listed down below in, in the description, of course. So these are going to be purchase links, affiliate links, and if you end up using any of these links, even links to like Luster, for instance, if you're trying to find sales on any of these things, or if you would rather use Abunda to try to finance maybe one or two of, of these things, if you're just trying to like pay over time instead of buying things outright without having to use a credit card, it's just going to be a pretty cool way of handling that. So I'm going to be leaving links to all that stuff down below. If you use my links, I get a small commission that does help me run things just a little bit more smoothly around here. So I would appreciate that a lot. And also do make sure to stop by the Tech Summit podcast that does go live now every week. I would love to see you over there. I would love to hear your thoughts. And we tend to talk a lot about tech. And we're also on pretty much every podcasting platform like Apple Podcasts. And we're also going to be on Anchor and Spotify. So yeah, do make sure to stop by those and you can listen to us too, if you prefer. Also, I do stream on Twitch, as you clearly know, so links to that are going to be right here. And as well as a display of all of my social media here, including my Twitter and my Instagram, of course. But with that said, hope that you enjoyed my setup. This has been Francisco from Tech Summit. Thank you so much for watching and I will be seeing you all later. Enjoy. Enjoy.